our God is real. He's real in our soul. We're going to start. We thank you for that selection, Sister Gamble, April Gamble, is our soloist for today, and Dr. Thomas, Dr. Mary and Pete Thomas, our organist, and we thank them for that. But we're going to have prayer right now by Brother Travis, on scripture by Brother Travis Pinder, and after he reads the scripture, we're going to have prayer by Brother Jason Pinder. And, and all of you that are listening, we welcome you to the broadcast, and we just say amen, thank you, Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice, hallelujah, and be glad in it. Amen. Thank you. 
your hand, Father God, when we seek out to your face, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the relationship that are being built, Father God. In the midst of social distancing, Father God. Lord, just let us be a light, Father God, to the world, Lord. And let the world turn to the church as the church turns to you, Father God. And say, what is it about that church? What is it about the body of Christ, Father God, in the midst of a pandemic? In the midst of social distancing, Father God, we're able to come together, Lord, even closer than before, Lord. And we know that it is you, it is your love, Father God, it is the God in us. It is the spirit, Father God, that lives in us, Father God. It is the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead, Father pray, God. Brother, pray. That gives us power right now, Lord. In the midst of pandemic, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for power, Lord, in the midst of pandemic, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for just your divine grace and mercy, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for peace right now, Lord. That's a past all understanding, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you are our ultimate source. You are our ultimate position, Father God. You are our lawyer in the courtroom, Lord. You are, Father God, this everything that we need, Father God, in, the, in, the, in these times. Lord, we lift up, Father God, everyone in you, Lord. We lift up children right now, Father God, that are not in their school buildings, Father God, but they're able to receive an education, Lord. Education, Father God, we understand is not always academic, Lord. Sometimes education can be like, again, relationship. Sometimes education can be social and emotional learning, Father God. Sometimes education can be spiritual, Father God. And we thank the Lord for touching our youth and our young, our young Great, children brother, right brother. now, Father. Lord, we just ask that you continue to touch our elders, Lord. Yeah. Those that don't need to be getting out right now, Father God, help us to minister to you, Father God. Touch them right where they are, Lord. Those that cannot get out, Father God, put them on our hearts, Lord, that we've been able to serve your people, Lord. We just thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank we you, had 10,000 talks. We couldn't praise your name enough, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Thank you. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We praise and worship your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Where they are. We 
were poor and those that were poor in spirit. Uh, he has been an advocate for this city for a long time through the Board of Aldermen and through working behind the scenes to get things done. And then when he was elected to the state legislature as a representative in Winst of Winston-Salem for the state of North Carolina, their representative, representative body, uh, he served this state well and the work that he had done. I'm telling you, we have been blessed. Now recently, and I'll just share this with Winston-Salem, uh, when I think about Carlton Eversley, a warrior in this city, an advocate for this city, passing away earlier this, this past year. And then I think about Vivian Burke, who had left a legacy in this city and done so much and has worked so hard to for the residents of this city, doing great things. And then I think about uh, even someone that worked quietly in the background, Reverend Johnny Young, that uh, there's a potter's house in Texas, but he had a potter's house here in Winston-Salem. And he served, and he fed, and he clothed, and he visited, and he did a great number of things with a great number of people and made their lives better. And then Larry Womble, my goodness, if you just check the post, check WXII and see what they posted, double check the Phoenix, see what they posted, the Chronicle will come out with something this week, and, and check the Check our uh, Bethlehem post, our Bethlehem uh, Facebook post, and you'll see a wonderful article or a wonderful post written on Brother Larry Wamble. He was a member of this church, so we honor him. We honor him for the work that he's done, and we thank God for the legacy that he left here. I was talking to a young lady that's a member of this church on yesterday, and, and she's the one that composed that post, and she said, I did not know that my aunt that my great aunt uh, worked with Larry Womble. I said, yes, she was an advocate. She was a volunteer. She worked, talking about Angel Mina Vance, uh, who has gone on to be with the Lord since a while back. But she was a fervent worker and supporter of Brother Larry Womble. So we pray for his family and we pray for Jamal and all of those that are part of his extended family. We pray for every last one of them, his wife, uh, we pray for just everyone that's a part of his inner circle. And even for those outside. And you might want to say, what's going to happen with our leadership? God will provide. God will raise up somebody. God will put people in place that are going to do a great thing. They're going to serve the people. I just believe that. I don't believe that God has brought us, kind of like the song, he has brought me too far to leave me. Now, he's not going to leave us. He's right there with us. Now, we've got another selection from Sister April Gamble. Would you uh, fasten your seatbelts or either unfasten them? So if you want to dance and praise or lift up the name of the Lord, stand on your feet and raise your hand, whatever you do, just go ahead and, and let God bless you today through this psalmist, through this soloist, Sister April Gamble.
and that God was blessing through that initiative. And so we thank God for the work that Mother Young has done. 93 years old and counting. Still in the still working for God. I mean that that that's an applause right there. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for that. Now, those of you that have your Bible, if you would turn to Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, and I'm going to read most of my scriptures today from the New King James Version. And, and it's a familiar story, you've heard it, but I want to share with you a few thoughts that God has impressed upon my heart and my mind to share. Uh, the word says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. I'd like to talk to you from a few moments today from this thought, my perspective, my perspective will not change. My perspective will not change. And let me start this off right now. Here in North Carolina, uh, the governor's uh, executive order uh, concerning churches and meeting in churches uh, was taken to the court and the court sided with the parties that were opposing his executive order. But let me just tell you, my perspective is not changing. We're still going to practice social distancing. We're still going to be careful on what we do. We still, we have a number of senior citizens in our church and we still are going to do the very best we can to protect them and our youth, our young people and all those. Matter of fact, one of the prayer requests I got last night was from somebody who's, who's young, a, a, a grandmother whose grandchild, actually her great-grandchild, uh, three years old, Brenner Hospital, and it has a number of, a number of health issues going on that are serious, that adults, older people would get, and that fact that she's got them, we don't know, but we just know that we're going to keep praying, praying for our youth and our young people. So, my perspective will not change. I, it will not change. One of my, you know, I just want to share that with you. My perspective and your perspective should not change if you are born again, if you, part of the, if you are part of the body of Christ. What does perspective mean? The word means belief or beliefs. The word means attitude, our mindset, my point of view. My perspective means my way of looking at something, my frame of reference, my opinion, my stand, or my stance. And if our perspective is different from someone else's perspective, we cannot change, and sometimes we get branded or labeled as difficult. You know what I'm talking about? Some of you have been called difficult because you have not changed with the world. They'll say you're not a team player. They'll say you're hard to get along with. You're obstinate. You're stubborn. You're headstrong, unyielding, unreasonable, and inflexible. And yes, I think if our perspective not changing if we base it on the word of God. Call us headstrong. Call us unyielding. Call us stubborn if you want, but call us children of God. And even if you don't want to give us that latitude and give us that amount, recognize us for that. We still are not going to change with the world. We are dedicated. We are yielded. We are committed. We are uh, connected to God. And that's not going to change. Our perspective will not change. Sometimes we engage in a tug of war. A battle between our own selves. Yes, we do. I believe this, but then maybe, maybe, just maybe, just maybe there's another way to look at this and that sometimes leads us to a period of compromising. And I understand sometimes we compromise so that we can move the ball and get everybody working together, but there's some things we don't compromise on. 
There are some things we stand fast and we stay committed to. And it doesn't matter how many people are saying the other thing, we are committed. We do not, we do not, we do not yield to other things. Compromising when working as a group member in order to move the project along is one thing. But yielding and compromising our convictions, our core values, our beliefs is something else. You know what the Bible, it teaches us in James 1, 5 through 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubt, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, he is, double mind, he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. We don't need to be double-minded. We don't need to be changing like the weather. The weather forecast might say rainy, and it comes out different and comes out sunny. I don't care what the weatherman says. I know God still is in charge of the weather. I don't care what someone says about you. God still has you in the palm of his hand. I don't care what someone says about this pandemic and how it may hurt us. And I know people, and, and it's real. Understand, it's real. And it's not a Republican, Democrat thing. People that are dying are Republicans, Democrats, whites, black, um, uh, Asian American. A lot of folk are leaving this world. So be real. And it's not Republican. It's not Democrat. Let me share with you. I'm talking to the body of Christ, whoever you are. You might be white, you might be Indian, you might be Asian, you might be European. I don't care, you may be African American, you may be African, but I'm talking to the body of Christ. Not to a Democratic convention, a Republican convention, not to, to a president. No, I'm not talking to him. Well, if he listens and he, he gets into the word, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Amen. If all of our senators and representatives would do the same thing and get into the word and accept Christ, some of them say they are, and they have, and maybe they have, but, but if you really love the Lord, you're, you're going to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, and you're not going to let your politics get in the way of trying to do what Jesus said. And as much as you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it also unto me. Let me leave it alone because some of you are going to say I'm preaching politics. No, I'm just preaching the gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Well, let me share with you this. The Hebrew boys, they had problems that came up not of their own choosing. In life, sometimes people will try to set you up. You will face challenges and difficulties that you didn't bring on yourself. Some people are unstable and ungodly. And some of them have power and political influence. They are moved by emotional imbalances, fits and rages, much like the, like the king that they're talking about, Nebuchadnezzar. Fits and rages, even their ego, they will make decisions that are not sound, but are based on impulsivity, spur of the moment thinking. And amen, I know that's true. But look at the three Hebrew boys. They did not sway, nor bend. They did not compromise their convictions or core values. And, and check this out, body of Christ, they stuck together. This is not a time for us to be divided as a body of Christ. This is not a time for Christians to pull one way and another group to pull another way. This is a time for all of us to yield and work together and follow true leadership. Amen. 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 Some people, listen, listen, listen. The Hebrew boys, let me just go on. They stuck together. They didn't turn on each other. You know, they didn't have that crab in the barrel mentality. Now, for some of you that don't know what that is, you, you ask some of the older folk. They'll tell you what the crab they stuck together. They supported each other. They were willing to face consequences for trusting and serving God together. Ephesians 4.14 said that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro 
and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Listen, we should not be those that are just going one way one day and another way another day and another way another day and then a day comes back and then we're changing up all over again. That's why I'm talking to you today about my perspective will not change. And the word said we shouldn't be tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, and listen by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. If you base your life on the word of God, I don't care what anybody says, you're basing it on the true foundation. If you base your life on what God's word says, I don't care what, what, what politics, I don't care what one group says, I don't care what a, a smaller group in a church says, if you base your life on the word of God, you can't go wrong. That's right. That's right. That's right. Can't go wrong. Amen. That's right. Matter of fact, in that same chapter, the 22nd through the, there's some verses that says that you put off, well, how do I serve God? You put off concerning your former conduct, your former way of life, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts, and you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. See, that's the key. We need to get our minds set straight. If our minds are wrong, everything else is going to turn out wrong. But if our minds are staying on Jesus and we're focused on the word of God, we'll be all right. We'll come out all right. God will bless us and keep us and look after us. And God will honor his word if our minds are set on him. And that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Nor give place to the devil. Don't let him in. There, yeah, there was an old song years ago, back in the 70s, I believe. Uh, don't let the devil ride. You know, some of y'all older folk can remember that. You younger folk, you can Google it and find out. But it said, if you let them ride, you know they'll want to drive. Don't let them ride. Don't give them any opportunity to get a toehold in your life. Nor give place to the devil. And then let all bitterness, all wrath, all anger, all clamor, all evil speaking be put away from you, from us, with all malice. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God and Christ forgave you. I'm telling you that if we do that and we don't change our perspective, we'll be all right. There's one song that says, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. There's another song that said, he thought I was worth loving and he sacrificed his life. Isn't that something that God thought you in your condition, even when you were lost, even when you didn't accept him or hadn't accepted him yet? He thought you were worth loving and he loved you anyway and he gave his only begotten son for you and I that we might have life? Oh, thank you, God. And he sacrificed his life. Jesus sacrificed his life for us. You see, people can be disingenuous. They can be one way, one moment, but then they can have ulterior motives behind what they do. Uh, they do things for their benefits. When I was a principal, I had a gentleman that in one of the classrooms, one of the elective classrooms, he came up with some great ideas and he would share them with me. But after he shared one with me, I got to think, he's always on the other end of the benefit. He's doing it for himself, what's going to benefit him, not what's going to benefit everybody. And so what we need to look at, how can we benefit everybody? Yeah. It's not about me. It's not about this group or that group. It's not about you. It's about the body of Christ and us working and helping to lift up everybody. You know, there's a saying, the rising tide does what? It flows all boats. When we help everybody, everybody is lifted. And everybody is blessed. And guess what? You know, on a boat, you might find a rope to a, a light boat or a smaller boat. When that bigger boat is lifted, those smaller boats are lifted. Think about your children. Think about your family. They're the ropes that are tied to your big boat. And as you are lifted, then they're going to be lifted. Hallelujah. Amen. 
That's a great Amen. analogy. Thank you, Jesus, for giving it to me right there. Amen. 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 And so, so I suppose that you can say that our enemy, Satan, does not play fair. And no, he doesn't. Well, you know that. I suppose you can finish this line of scripture. The thief comes to. You got it. But he said, I came. And have it more abundantly. See, when you know the word of God, you don't have to change your perspective. God came to give us life. God came to be our way maker. God came to be our provider. He is our Jehovah Jireh. He meets every one of our needs. He is our Jehovah to sit in. He is the Lord, our banner. And he watches over us. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord, our healer. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is God, our peace. Hallelujah. And he does give peace, not as the world gives. He says, I give you peace, not as the world gives. So I want you to understand, and, and let me just share. Let me go back to Daniel, the third chapter. And I'm going to read a few verses. We're going to be through in just a moment. But just hear me. Hear me out. Hear me out, because there's a blessing in this for all of us that are listening, even a blessing to me. I'm telling you, let me share this with you. And, and old folk used to tell, old preacher used to tell me this. Before you preach a message that God gives you, it preaches to your own soul. Amen. Amen. I want you to catch this. Daniel 3, 8 through 12. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O King, live forever. You, O King, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, the, the orchestra, the music, shall fall down and worship the golden image that you made. And whoever does not fall down, this is what the king decreed. Whoever does not fall down in worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. I'm talking about our perspective will not change. There are certain Jews whom you have sent over the affairs of the province. Give me a little more sound, Brother Mitch. And he named them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These Chaldeans and others that came forward to talk to the king said, These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. The Bible teaches us, saints, that if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Jesus. But because we're not of the world, because we have been chosen out of the world, we find that there are times that the world hates us. Yes. These very young men were unable to act with faithfulness to God in the midst of a crooked and a perverse generation. Right. Sometimes just being a Christian may provoke the opposition of the world. Oh, yes. If we live holy, justly, and unblameably, and if in our life we show faith and trust in God, yes. opposition at some point may or will come without our seeking it. But I want you to know that God says this to us, that we ought to as much as, as, as lies in us to live peaceably with all men. We need to pray for those that despitefully use us. We need to pray for those that call themselves our enemies. We need to pray for those that aren't walking in Christ because God loves them anyway and it's God's will that None should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yeah. Oh, amen. You know that. When opposition comes in at some point in our Christian walk, it will attempt to stare us down. We shall hold our ground. Our perspective in serving God has not, and it will not change. The Bible teaches us that we should be steadfast, unmovable, 
always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our work in him is not in vain. So I say to us, my perspective will not change. How about you? Our perspective will not change. How about the rest of us? Look at the three Hebrew boys. It wasn't just the one who spoke to the king. It was the three collectively. They did not waver. They did not quiver. Their perspective did not change. Our perspective should not change either. Lord, King, oh King, not Lord, but oh King, we're not hesitant to answer you that our God is able to deliver us. Somebody ought to make that profession of faith right now. My God is able to deliver me. Amen. And then they said, but even if he does not, we will not bow and we will not serve your God. My God is able. Our God is able. They did not waver. They stood their ground. We should be like Job when he said, yet will I trust him. Good God, my perspective, saints, will not change. Where the body of Christ should be light set upon a hill that shines brightly in darkness of sin and doubt. Our perspective should not change. That's why my perspective is not going to change, saints. That's why on Christ the solid rock I stand. No other ground is sinking sand. Knowing that with the temptation, listen, listen, the word said, he will also make a way for our escape. Isn't that wonderful that God makes a way for us to get out of the mess of we find ourselves in. I don't know about you, but I got testimonies how God lifted me and how God blessed me and how those that have tried to set traps for me, God allowed me to walk around them, to walk over them, but still be victorious. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? You have folk on, you folk messing with you, but God still looked after you. Give me a little bit more sound, my brother. And see, I want to tell you that if we trust in God and we believe in God and get again whatever comes our way, if we stand fast in our convictions, our perspective not changing, that God can do for us what he did for the Hebrew children. The satraps, the administrators, the governors, the king's counselors, they gathered together. They saw that these men on whose body the fire had no power. Wait, let me back up a minute. When the king said he gave them a chance to change their mind, but they did not change their mind. And when they did not change their mind, then he told some soldiers, strong soldiers, bind them, tie them up, heat the furnace seven times hotter than what it usually is. And when they took them to that took them to that furnace that was heated seven times high, and they opened it up, the flames came up and consumed those soldiers. And what happened? Those three Hebrew boys fell into the furnace. See, I want to tell you, some of you fall into your stuff. Some of you fall into trials. Some of you fall into the temptations that, and the, the problems and the evil that the devil has sent before you. They fell into the furnace. Hallelujah. But then when they fell into the furnace, at one point, King Nebuchadnezzar walked over and looked down into the furnace. And he said to them, have I not put three into the furnace? And I see them walking around not hurt, not burned, not singed, yet there's one more in the furnace, and his appearance seems like the Son of God. I want you to know, kind of like that here, man, he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me that I am his own. And as you go through the fire, as you go through your trial, God will go with you. As you go through things that mess with you, God will be with you. 
as you go through challenges in your life, God will be with you. I'm listening. I'm someone sitting here today that had a bad accident on a motorcycle and was not several, several, several feet away and landed somewhere else. Banged up and, and messed up, but God has blessed him and is here today. He's got the use of his limbs and he can do what he wants to do. This is what I'm saying that God met him right there. And the angels of the Lord protected him. He could have been dead and gone, but he's here right now in the land of the living. Some of you listening today could have been dead and gone, but God has you in the land of the living. Some of you were messed up and everyone gave up on you, but God did not give up on you, but he stayed right by your side. He stayed there with you and he brought you out. Some folk can be caught up in alcohol, but God took the alcohol from their taste. Some folk can be messed up with drugs, but God turned that situation around. He gave them a certain amount of pot, power over temptation. He gave them LSD, God's love, salvation, and deliverance. He gave him receiving and saving souls and because he saved me because he blessed me because he saved you because he blessed you you could have been left in the furnace but God brought you out you could have been left for dead but God raised you up you could have been left broke and bankrupt but God blessed you and provided every one of your needs. You may have had it rough, but that's all right. God is still by your side. You may have had folk turn on you. That's all right. As long as I've got Jesus, everything, everything is going to be all right. I'm telling you right now, God's been good to me. I've seen him work in my life. I've seen him work in my children's life. I've seen him work in my wife's life. And when the devil said, I've got you, God said, no, you don't. Because he that the Son has set free is free indeed. Some of you have been given up on cancer and, and congenitive heart failure and other kinds of diseases and things in your life. But God stepped in and he did a Hezekiah blessing and he extended your life and he blessed you the more. Can I get a witness out there in the audience? Not necessarily here, but out there in the internet audience. God has been good to you and because he's been good to you, you and you and been good to me, I just want you to know my perspective has not changed. Call me stubborn, call me unreasonable, call me what you want to call me, but I call myself a child of the Most High God. I call myself blessed and highly favored. What do you call yourself? A child of the Almighty God. You call yourself blessed and highly favored. You call yourself walking in victory. You call yourself healing over your life. You call your power, the power of God, to bless your family and say, yes, God will, and he's doing it right now. If it had not been for the Lord, I don't know where I would be, but my perspective will not change. Knowing I want you to understand that I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to lean on him. I'm going to put my faith in him. I'm going to put everything I've got. It's like the gambler around the table when he holds up his cards and he looks at his cards and he thinks he's got a good hand and he puts them all down and he takes his money and he pushes it into the middle of the table. He says, I'm all in. Well, let me tell you, I'm all in for Jesus. I'm all in for God. I'm all in for serving him. And it does not yet appear what we shall be.
it, but when he comes, we shall be like him. God is making us brand new. Is any man be in Christ?
for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12 says, As many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the children of God. All you got to do is receive him. Let's pray, saints. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, somebody says that. And somebody, someone, is standing in the door. You're ready to, as you open the door, to step in. You're ready to accept you as your Savior. And it's not about feelings, it's not about a chill. It's believing in our heart and confessing with our mouth that brings about our salvation. That we believe that Jesus, you are the Son of God. That God, you sent Jesus down here to sacrifice his life for us so that when he died and was put in the tomb on the third day, he rose again with all power in his hand. So that we may be able to accept him as our Savior. And those that are listening, we believe right now someone is accepting him right now. Somebody is accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior. And the wonderful thing about this Facebook Live broadcast, Lord, is that it will be replayed over and over and over. And so, God, we thank you for the salvation message that will bless and touch lives over and over and over again. And for those that have stepped away from the old way of life and have surrendered their life to God, send us a post on Facebook and how we can contact you. And we will try, we will attempt to share with you some scriptures that will help you in your growth process. Hallelujah. I come to the garden alone.